As you can see from the pile of boxes and bags behind me, uh, we're going to be doing a book haul today. I have so many fun videos planned for October and a good amount of these books are going to be for those videos. We of course have books from our typical places like Barnes and Amazon, but also I have a few books from Blackwells, which is a UK company, and I think we're just going to go ahead and start off with those books first because I'm pretty excited to talk about them. Uh, basically, they're kind of my solution or replacement for Book Depository. Very similarly to Book Depository, they do ship out the books one at a time. Also too, a big bonus to them is their shipping to the US is free. So so far overall, I haven't really noticed a difference between Book Depository and Blackwells, which is amazing. And we're going to go ahead and start off with this book, which doesn't have any kind of packaging because uh, I got a copy of this for my sister as well for her birthday. So I've already like unboxed it and threw away the packaging and everything. Anyway, uh, this is God Killer by Hannah Kaner. And this is actually a good example of getting a book in the UK that's not provided in the US. So basically in the US, as far as I know, you can only get the paperback version of this book. And the hardcover is so much prettier. The imagery is basically the same for the hardcover and the paperback, but the hardcover has the title, the author's name, and then there's some like decorative dots throughout the cover are all in gold. Also too, the hardcover has uh, some really pretty like end papers. I've been wanting this book for at least a couple of months now and I've been kind of like searching for a decently priced one and I finally managed to find it on Blackwell's so very very excited but basically this book kind of gives me like cozy fantasy vibes. At first I thought it was a fantasy romance but after I got the book and then read the synopsis again I realized that I don't think that it is. <laughs> Kissin's family were killed by zealots of a fire god. Now she makes a living killing gods and enjoys it. That is until she finds a god she cannot kill, Skeddy, which probably a good thing that they didn't make this romance, I don't think, because a romance with someone named Skeddy, it just reminds me of like, spaghetti, so I don't know if I could take that seriously. But it says, Skeddy, a god of white lies, has somehow bound himself to a young noble, and they are both on the run from an unknown assassin. Joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest, they must travel to the ruined city of Blenradin, where the last of the wild gods reside, to each beg a favor. Persuaded by demons and in the midst of burgeoning civil war, they will all face a reckoning. Something is rotting at the heart of the kingdom, and only they can be the ones to stop it. Kind of gives me cozy fantasy vibes, because it also gives me, like, ragtag team type of vibes and that's always cozy fantasy to me. Also if you're curious this is what the hardcover looks like. I always want to know what the actual hardcovers look like so I'm going to start showing you guys. Uh, but this one's just green, very very plain and then it has the title and the author name in gold. And then I have two different books in these kind of like small padded mailers and the first one is Crossed by Emily McIntyre and we're going to kind of circle back to Book Depository because originally the first three books that I got in this series I did get from Book Depository not realizing that there was a difference between the UK and the US covers. Now fast forward a few months, I needed to order the next book in the series, Twisted, but unfortunately again, Book Depository is no longer, so I just went ahead and ordered it on Amazon, and when it came, it was much larger than the other three books that I had. And I have actually already read Twisted. It's like on my bookshelves already, but this one I have been waiting for this video to like show you guys and talk to you guys about Blackwells and things. So now that we finally got to unbox this, I'm very excited to finally read it. <laughs> and then the second book that we have in our little bubble mailer is Powerless. First off, I'm obsessed, obsessed with this cover. I love the fact that the title is metallic silver, anything metallic on a book cover instantly sold. <laughs> but also I really love the fact that the book is like matte. It has kind of like that soft matte texture, but the sword on the front is like glossy. So it kind of like stands out from the rest of the cover. It just is so pretty. In the US, like on Amazon, I think the cheapest I could find this was like 17 or 18 bucks. On Blackwell's, it was like 11 or 12. And it's probably the same kind of scenario with The Wicked Villains, where the cover art is exactly the same, the books are just maybe smaller. But anyway, let's go ahead and find out what this is about because honestly, I don't really know. All I know is that it's a fantasy romance and Frankly, that was all I needed to know. The elites have possessed powers for decades, gifted to them by the plague, while those born ordinary are just that, banished from the kingdom of Ilya and shunned from society. No one knows this better than Payton Gray, an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites. When she unsuspectingly saves one of the Ilya's princes, Kai Azer, she's thrown into the purging trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elite's powers. If the trials and the opponents within them don't kill her, the prince she's fighting feelings for will if he discovers what Payton is. Completely ordinary. I mean, a fantasy romance automatically is a win, but then to throw in kind of like a trials type of situation, love it. Also, super excitingly, I just found out that the author of this book, Lauren Roberts, uh, actually lives 
in Michigan, which is where I'm at, and she's gonna be doing book signings. So that's definitely something I'm gonna be doing. I've never gone to a book signing before, so I'm really excited. I'm a little nervous as well, just because new experiences of any sort always make me nervous, but uh, I think it'll be fun, so. Anyway, and then the very last book that we have from Blackwell's, I keep almost wanting to say book depository, <laughs> is Foxglove by Adeline Grace. This is the second book in a series. The first one is called Belladonna. Again, this is obviously the UK cover, which honestly, in my opinion, is so much cuter than the US covers. I don't really like the US covers, especially because the first book in the series, Belladonna, has a bunch of these little like birds or a couple of these like birds on the cover. And this one actually has a fox with one of those birds in its mouth. That play on imagery is definitely what sold me on the UK covers. I just love like the creepy kind of morbid imagery of that. Also, I didn't even realize this till just now, but <laughs> the back cover has uh, like an image of a little fox butt and that is adorable. Now let's go ahead and move on to our Amazon packages. <laughs> the first book that I have is called Don't Let It In by Brandon Faircloth. Is this not like the coolest? freaking cover ever. Like I said, the majority of the books in this haul from now on are gonna be horror, thriller, like spooky season themed. And I did decide that I wanna start like seasonally decorating my bookshelves. And this is one of the books that I bought purely because I do think it sounds cool, but like mostly because I thought this would be really cool to like showcase on my shelves. This is basically a collection of horror short stories. And to get like a little teaser, the back of the book says, in the still darkness outside, you hear a soft voice asking for help. Traveling some unknown countryside, you find a small town where laughter is definitely not the best medicine. Perhaps you are conducting an autopsy and find a USB drive where it should not be. Or you find yourself haunted by something that is always, always behind you. Before you read the 24 stories contained in this latest expansion of Brandon Faircloth's ever-growing interconnected universe of horror, there are a few things you should bear in mind. You will be terrified, you will be moved, and you will be changed by your new steps through this world. And most importantly, when you hear the quiet scratching outside your small circle of light, don't let it in. This just sounds creepy and fun and I'm very excited about it. And again, is this not like the coolest freaking cover art? <laughs> Lately, Amazon has been a little touch and go. I've had to return like three or four books within the last couple of months because they've just been like super damaged. And this package specifically came like this where it looks like it broke in transit and the post office had to like tape it back together, which this package did actually have three books in it originally. Uh, I've only got two because Kevin is currently reading one of them, but it did come with three originally. And I just feel like if you're gonna ship more than one, it should probably be in something a little heavier duty than a bag. But anyway, the book that I'm missing, I'm just gonna like pop a, a picture of it on the screen because I forgot to grab it. But the book is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. And I've read a couple of Riley Sager books last year and I really liked them. So I'm very excited to read more this year. And this is one that honestly grabbed my attention because of the cover. Uh, I love the kind of like 80s, 90s vibe of it. Unfortunately, I have heard a lot of negative things about this book in particular. But again, Kevin is reading it and I think he's like halfway through and he said so far he's liking it. So anyway, moving on. I also have The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz and this is basically the first book in a series of books about a detective. Like every other book in this haul so far I feel like. What originally drew me to this book is the cover and honestly the cover is so much cooler in person than I thought it was even just seeing it online. The knife and the little metal part of the pencil are actually metallic and shiny but also the cover in general of this kind of has like a textured almost leather type of feel to it and I just think that's so cool. But anyway let's go ahead and read the back. It says, a woman crosses a London street. It's just after 11 a.m. on a bright spring morning and she is going into a funeral parlor to plan her own service. Six hours later, the woman is dead, strangled with a crimson curtain cord in her own home. Enter disgraced police detective Daniel Hawthorne, a brilliant eccentric man as quick with an insult as he is to crack a case. And Hawthorne has a partner, the celebrated novelist Anthony Horowitz, curious about the case and looking for new material. So yeah, so that's something that's really cool about this book. The author actually like wrote himself into the stories, which I thought was so unique. The vibes of these books in general kind of give me like Sherlock Holmes type of vibes where the author of the book is kind of like Sherlock Holmes's Watson and each book is like a different case to solve. And then last for this package, we have Tiny Nightmares, which is a book that I mentioned a while back. I did a video where uh, I read books based on their covers and I had you guys vote on a bunch of different books. And this is one of the options that I had for that video. Unfortunately, it didn't win, but I kind of had it in my head, even if it didn't, that I would get it for October. And here we are. This is Tiny Nightmares, Very Short Tales of Horror, and it does have several different authors. 
I love the mixture of the textures on this cover where like the black is like glossy and kind of like popped out from the rest of it. But then also the pages have these like pink drips on them which are super cool. And also some imagery. In this playful, innovative collection, leading literary and horror writers spin chilling tales in only a few pages. Each slim, fast-moving story brings to life the kind of monsters readers love to fear. From broken-hearted vampires to uber-taking serial killers and mind-reading witches. It also has some more to that synopsis, but we'll just leave it at that. Uh, this sounds super cute. I'm very excited for it. The last book that we have from Amazon is How to Be Eaten by Maria Adelman. This is another book where I haven't actually heard like a whole lot about it, but what I have heard has not been the best, but I think it sounds kind of cool. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping for the best. A darkly funny and provocative debut novel that reimagines classic fairy tale characters as modern women in a support group for trauma. In present day New York City, five women meet in a basement support group to process their traumas. Bernice grapples with the fallout of dating a psychopathic blue bearded billionaire. Ruby, once devoured by a wolf, now wears him as a coat. Gretel questions her memory of being held captive in a house made of candy. Ashley, the winner of a bacheloresque dating show, wonders if she really got her promised fairy tale ending, and Rain's love story will shock them all. So basically, this is about a support group of the heroine characters in fairy tales, which some of those definitely didn't sound familiar to me, like Bernice with the blue bearded billionaire. I don't know what that's about. But we do have Gretel, which I'm familiar with, and Little Red Riding Hood and things. Uh, so I'm excited for this book. I'm, I'm hoping for the best, like I said. Also, I wanted to show you the hardcover, and I almost forgot. Uh, very plain. It's just plain black with red writing. Now let's move on to the giant stack of books that I got from Barnes & Noble. So our first book is Masters of Death. This is definitely one of my more recent purchases and this is actually a Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of this book. I've been seeing this book pop up in a lot of people's like fall TBRs and I was under the impression that this was a new book and it's not. This book was actually published in 2018 originally. There just is always like a constant stream of new books coming out that I never really have the time even to read the new ones, let alone older books. So uh, I'm really excited that for whatever reason, this is coming back around and it sounds so good. Viola is a struggling real estate agent and a vampire, but her biggest problem currently is that the house she needs to sell is haunted the ghost haunting the house has been murdered, and until he can solve the mystery of how he died, he refuses to move on. Fox Demora is a medium, and though he is also most definitely a shameless fraud, he isn't entirely without his uses, seeing as he's actually the godson of death. When Viola seeks out Fox to help her with the ghost-infested mansion, he becomes inextricably involved in a quest that neither he nor Vi expects or wants. But with the help of an unruly poltergeist, a demonic personal trainer, a sharp-voiced angel, a love-stricken reaper, and a few mindfulness-practicing creatures, Vi and Fox soon discover that the difference between a mysterious lost love and an annoying dead body isn't nearly as distinct as they thought. <laughs> this one definitely doesn't like sound spooky or anything, it just sounds kind of fun. And again, because this is a Barnes Noble exclusive, uh, you do get this kind of like, kind of like cream colored cover, but then also you do get like exclusive uh, end papers. So here's what the front one looks like. And then this is what the back one looks like. Although I will say that the end papers and the cover art don't really have the same vibe. <laughs> See what we have next in our little bag of tricks. Uh, next up we have The Witches of New York. And this is actually a book that I've had on my wish list for a while now. I wanna say since like last year this time. New York City in the spring of 1880 is a place alive with wonder and curiosity. Seances are the entertainment of choice in exclusive social circles, and many enterprising women, some possessed of true intuitive powers, some gifted with the art of performance, find work as mediums. At their humble tea shop, Tea and Sympathy, Adeline and Eleanor provide a place for whispered confessions, secret cures, and spiritual assignations for a select society of ladies who speak the right words and ask the right questions. When Tea and Sympathy post an ad that reads, respectable lady seeks dependable shop girl, those adverse to magic need not apply, 17-year-old Beatrice leaves the safety of her village to answer. Beatrice doesn't know it yet, but she has great spiritual gifts, ones that she will come to harness under the tutelage of Adeline and Eleanor. So, it sounds really interesting. Next up, we've got another paperback. 
Ooh, okay, I'm really, really excited for this. This book was basically number one on my list to get for October. So this is Mary, An Awakening of Terror by Nat, Nate, Cassidy. The main draw to this is the cover. I feel like I'm saying that about every single book, but I am very much a cover-driven book buyer. <laughs> and this cover is just so beautiful to me. I love kind of like the painted kind of look of it. But then also just like the intrigue of the fact that it's a woman in a bathtub. But aside from the cover, I actually have heard a lot of really good things about this book. I feel like this is one of the ones that for people that like the horror genre, this is one of their favorites. So uh, this says, Mary is a quiet middle-aged woman doing her best to blend into the background. Unremarkable, invisible, unknown even to herself. But lately, things have been changing inside Mary. Along with the hot flashes and body aches, she can't look in the mirror without passing out and the voices in her head have been urging her to do some unspeakable things. Fired from her job in New York, she moves back to her hometown, hoping to reconnect with her past and inner self. Instead, visions of terrifying, mutilated specters overwhelm her with the increasing regularity, and she begins auto-writing strange thoughts and phrases. Mary discovers that these experiences are echoes of an infamous serial killer. Then the killings begin again. And then there's a quote that says, genuinely scary and at times both heartfelt and heartbreaking. Mary is a powerhouse of a horror novel with something important to say. We need more like this standing ovation. It will definitely be like one of the first horror books that I read this season. Very, very excited. Uh, next up, we've got a fat book. I'm having a hard time grabbing it. <laughs> this is called Plain Bad Heroines. Um, and this Chunky Dunky book has kind of more of a dark academia type of vibe. There's actually kind of a fun quote at the top of it. It says, an exquisitely plotted, wickedly crafted romp, a supersized slurpee that will satiate you and leave behind a sugar high. Exhilarating. Our story begins in 1902 at the Brookhans School for Girls. Flo and Clara, two impressionable students, are obsessed with each other and with a daring young writer named Mary McLean, the author of a scandalous best-selling memoir. To show their devotion to Mary, the girls establish their own private club and call it the Plain Bad Heroine Society. They meet in secret in a nearby apple orchard, the setting of their wildest happiness and ultimately of their deaths. There's more to that synopsis, but I'm just gonna leave it there because already very intrigued. <laughs> Ooh, there's also at least one illustration in here. Uh, actually flipping through this, there are a few other illustrations in here as well. So I'm actually really excited, even more excited for this than I was before. So there is that one. All right, we've only got a couple more books left. Second to last, we have Slewfoot, A Tale of Bewitchery by Brahm. And this is yet another one that I bought purely because the cover. Does this not have the coolest? freaking imagery. And this one also has some illustrations in like the middle of the book. I'm not going to show you all of them because I don't want to give the surprise element of that away, but I am just realizing that they have names at the bottom of them. So I'm going to assume that these are the characters of the book, which is actually pretty cool to have like a visual to the characters. The wild folk call him father, slayer, protector. The colonists call him slewfoot, demon, devil. To Abitha, a recently widowed outcast, alone and vulnerable in her pious village, he is the only one she can turn to for help. Set in colonial New England, Slewfoot is a tale of magic and mystery, of triumph and terror, from acclaimed author and artist, Brom. So yeah, this just sounds so cool, and I absolutely love the artistic elements of like the illustrations. Also, I was just flipping through it, and in between like paragraphs and stuff, it has like these little spiders. So this book just seems really, really fun, and I'm excited for it. And now we are on to our very last book of this video, which is Grady Hendrix, How to Sell a Haunted House. And this is again, another book that I pretty much knew right away or like going into October that I wanted to get specifically because this just sounds fun. But then also I've never really read anything from Grady Hendrix, but I do have a couple other of their books. And I thought it would be fun to kind of kick off October with like a Grady Hendrix specific reading vlog. So I got this book for that. I'm not going to talk about what it's about because uh, you'll find out very soon in that reading vlog. But also my camera battery is about to die. So I need to wrap up this video. <laughs> So those are all of the books that I got specific for the fall season. I also do plan on reading like all of my horror and thriller books that I already own as well. So that is everything that I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have slash have had the most amazing of days and I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. Bye!